This is Brittany Brooks, and you are watching the Three Count Podcast. I'm in fashion, roll with cool Welcome, fashion. everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast with Dance Now Wintering. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, and I'll lead you up that mountain called wrestling. And by now, after, you know, season four, our like 300 and something episode, I would just hope you say with me, I am your Sherpa. Because like your tribal chief, acknowledge me. But like every good Sherpa, you always got to have someone who's been there, done that, and can do it more efficiently than you can. That's why it's never about me. It's about who's entering the ring. So who's entering the ring today? You can find this person at AEW Dark. You can find them at AW Lab. You can find them at ROW, FSW. DPW, BWE, LWP, PWL. She is one badass. She is tough as they come. She is built of five foot five fire, fire and fight and fury. And she is also Brittany Brooks. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Hell yeah, I'm super hyped too. Cause I was like, you know, I, we, we kind of ran each other like, on the Twitter spaces, thanks Gabe, by the way. Uh, and then we just kind of like chopped it up and then we were like, yo, let's bring on the podcast. And you're like, cool, let's do it. And like, as I'm like doing research and like looking over like where the places you've worked, a lot of the people that you worked with have actually been on this show. And I was like, oh snaps, this is crazy. <laughs> this seems to go full circle. <laughs> Yeah, no, I love, I do Gabe's the Twitter spaces every single week. They make me so happy. I just, I feel like I learned so much on there. And I'm also like meeting so many people. Like I was able to connect with a lot of people, but yeah, I have worked a lot of like bigger names. So like, cause I'm really trying to get out there more. Cause I wrestled in my little bubble for a very long time. And now I'm getting out there and like flourishing and exploring and spreading my wings. <laughs> 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 that's kind of like that's kind of what everybody has to do right like we all have to go to different places sometimes we get kind of comfortable in our area and just kind of like in our small world and we're just we're just happy being there and then we start to expand out and, and build and grow you know like some of the names that we saw like that you had been right uh trisha dora was one of them that i had mentioned to you while we were off camera uh she's been on the show you know we brought on viva van who also is another person we worked with uh we talked about uh gypsy mac very proud of her and all the stuff that she's doing out there in the in the in the great Las Vegas area, you know. And then Cutthroat Cody and like you know, uh, I'm sure you probably ran into him being that you're out in the the great AZ area. But Roman Roselle is yes. So crazy story. This is probably gonna blow your mind. Uh, Roman and I went to college together in Iowa in 2003. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was before I was born. Yeah, I'm, I'm the researcher too. I was like, oh man, this is gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all were in college when before I was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a thing that happened. <laughs> That's wild. But yo, like right off the jump, I gotta know who is Brittany Brooks. Ah, uh, Brittany Brooks. So I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I have been like. I don't know. I very happy of the like personality. Like when I go out to the ring, I just love, you know, energy and like giving off really positive vibes. Um, little kids love me. And that's exactly what I want. I always like hand out a little bracelet when I come out and, you know, um, just like definitely an underdog. I kind of always like I've been on a losing streak. I won a couple matches here and there, but like at Arizona Wrestling Federation, I am on a losing streak. But, you know, it's okay because we just keep persisting and we keep going. Um, I like to give off, like, Barbie energy. So, like, I just – very Barbie. I'm so excited for the Barbie movie. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've been wrestling, so I've been training since I was 14. So, four years now. And I started in, like, a kid's class where it wasn't really taken, like, that seriously. And then – you know, like eventually we got moved into the adult class and it was like, oh, like this is my profession. This is my job. I'm going to take this so much more seriously. Um, and then just like from there, I got better and I had my first match in 2020 and then COVID shut everything down. And then I wrestled 2021 pretty much the whole year, but only for AWF. And I only had maybe 10 to 12 matches. And then in 2022, 
um, I tore my ACL in March. So I was out from March to December when I returned. And ever since I returned, I have been wanting to get out there as much as possible. Now that I'm 18, I'm not like a little girl biner trying to like get on shows because a lot I got rejected a lot. Um, but now it's like I can get out there and do what I can and spread my name and go everywhere. And that's exactly what I want. I don't want to be in my my little bubble anymore. Like I love wrestling in Arizona because it's just it's my home. But I have been traveling and wrestling every single weekend, whereas I used to only wrestle like once a month, if that, for in Arizona. So it's been so much fun. I It's weird because like we both started kind of like our – debuts in 2020 right because i started january 2020 and yes, then the covid shut everything down so yep. i couldn't do anything right so i was just locked down i had my first match actually in i think it was like october of 2020 and the only reason it happened in october it's supposed to happen in august i actually tore uh my abdomen and so i had to like restart pretty much everything over um just like learning how to walk like not really how to walk but just kind of how to move and like take bumps yeah. again that's and so cool. like that's everything yeah and it sucked because oh. i was like every time i was hitting i was like ah my abs like this sucks but then like i made my debut in october of 2020 and then like the next day i was wrestling darius carter who's like in the pwi 500 now and i was like yo he's you know the richest prize in pro wrestling for those who don't know now you know but um he like he, i was i was great but he was my second match ever and i was in a, in a triple threat with one of my trainers and i was like that's this is crazy and we're like working all over the place and then um so i only had four matches in 2020 but just like you the following year like i think i had 17 matches right so i'm like all right we're kind of building up and then in 2022 i was i think i had worked like 40 something matches at the time and I thought that was a lot until I saw a lot of other people who are like, you know, maybe somebody on the AEW roster who wears a mask and goes by the name Penta had put in like 36 matches in 30 days. And I was like, that is a lot of bumping. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of, that's a lot. <laughs> um, like yeah. I, I used to like wish that I could wrestle every single weekend because I would see people doing it. And I, totally didn't understand that like in order to try to get out there more like you have to want it and you have to be putting in the work to like talk to promoters and just reach out and have matches and have stuff to send like it wasn't until February I was like how are you doing it I actually I asked like a lot of people and a lot of were like yeah I just sent over blah 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 I was like they don't hit you up because I that was never really explained to me it was kind of just like I wrestled my shows in Arizona and I was like, I don't know how to get anywhere else. And like, and now I'm like, nah, I'd be sending this paragraph to every promotion I will come across and want to work with. Like, because I think it's just so important to like get out there and get reps. Cause right now I'm like, I personally don't feel like I'm where I should be like in terms of like skill and like wrestling ability. Like I want to get better. And I feel like in the past three months I have done so much and just gotten so much better and so much more confident in like what I do. And I feel like I'm finally starting to like not hit a stalemate with like, Oh, like I really suck at this. I still don't think I'm good, but <laughs> it's like, you know, you're your own biggest critic, but <laughs> No, you're right. But the one thing, you know, what's crazy is I was just talking about like the same kind of scenario with somebody and they broke it down to me this way. Right. Because you can send out millions of descriptions to everybody, hundreds of thousands of people. Right. And you could hope that they're going to read it. But whenever you watch TV, how many times do you watch or read the description of the TV show? Like never. <laughs> right. But if your friend told you, hey, I just watched this awesome TV show, what are you going to yep. do? And I'm that's like, oh, let's watch it. I don't even care what it's about. If you think it's good, then I'm <laughs> going to think it's good. So, no, I get you. Making connections, talking to people, um, making sure that people, like, vouch for you. Yeah. Sure. Thanks, Eel. I appreciate that, too. Because when he said that to me, it's like the whole world is, like, unlocked. And I was like, yeah. whoa. That I never makes thought so about that. Sense, though. Cause, yeah, because I was – yeah and I was like you I was like yo I just want like I'm gonna put in the work like I'm gonna grind I'm gonna put in the work and people are gonna notice and then they're gonna be like hey let's go get this guy why do we have someone like Red Dog on the show and then I realized like I could keep doing this 
or I could, you know, have someone vouch for me that says, Hey, yeah, bring them on the show. Let's use them. And they can show you what they can do. And I was like, that's crazy to me. Like, I just never thought about that. And I have, and to be fair to, to you guys watching this, we have definitely had tons of guests on. So like, I clearly, my network game is like, is on, I don't want to say on point, but it's on point. Like it's, it's just there. It's yeah. I'm reaching out to a lot of different people and getting them on the podcast. So I definitely know like I can network out and get, get, get attached to people. And it's just, it's crazy to think that that's kind of like what you need to do. But when you think about it in an aspect of like TV, I don't watch TV shows unless somebody recommends it to me. Cause I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I listen, man, it's Monday. I'm watching wrestling. It's Tuesday. I'm watching wrestling. It's Wednesday. I'm watching wrestling. It's every Thursday. Day. Yeah. Wrestling every, every day. day. Wrestling is but maybe, every day I love but it. maybe there's a day, maybe there's a day I'm not watching wrestling. They're like, well, what do you want to watch? I'm like, I don't really know. I don't know what to watch. And then someone's like, Hey, have you seen the movie the raid? No. What's that? And I go and watch it. And I'm like, Oh, I love this movie. <laughs> Oh my god, speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy comes out on Friday and I want to see it so bad, but like I'm flying to New York that day. So I'm like <laughs> like I kind of want to do like a midnight on Thursday or something and be like let's go watch Guardians of the Galaxy because I'm so excited for it. So now you guys know when this movie when this when this episode dated. So <laughs> we've, oh, we've officially dated the episode. No, but yeah, you're right. I'm a I'm a massive uh, I'm a massive Guardians of the Galaxy fan yeah. since the movies that came out. I'm gonna be honest, I never read the comic books, but since yeah. the movies that came out, I definitely fell in love with like these guys and like just I I I definitely am kind of sad to see that the whole series is gonna get wrapped up, but it's definitely cool to see that this is like we get to see kind of like the ending, but we get to see also learn like new things about new people. So I'm excited for that too. Yeah. The word, like I hate it when they like wrap up shows, movies, anything. I'm like, don't do it to me. Don't do it to me. <laughs> Especially Marvel. I'm such a Disney Marvel Star Wars nerd. Like I'm obsessed. Like those are the movies that I watch if I do ever get time. I feel like such a bad fan because like I haven't watched Star Wars in like a year. And normally I'm like <laughs> rewatching them every now and then and like keeping up on the shows. Like I haven't seen the new season of Mandalorian at all. And I also never saw She-Hulk or um, I feel like there was another Marvel show that came out that I didn't get to watch. So I, I definitely know. missed She-Hulk, but I did catch uh, Moon Knight. So I definitely oh, I that. With that one. I was very confused because, like, the ancient mythology <laughs> straight, didn't make a lot of sense to me. But there, there was that. There was a show. Oh, uh, um, come Ms. on, Marvel. Uh, Miss Marvel. Yeah, I yeah. love Miss Marvel. That was a great show too. And then one, I just started watching. And for those who who know, I just started watching uh, Moon Girl and uh, Devil Dinosaur, and I'm like, I'm I'm hooked. Like, I think it's so much fun. I'm like, this is a great show. Yeah, so if you get a chance to, it's animation. It's animated, right? Okay. Uh, Moon Girl. But it's about uh, about this girl who's very, very smart, and she creates a portal, which then brings in this big dinosaur. And it's uh, it's based off a Marvel co comic. But, yeah, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Okay. Not that Disney needs my help to promote it, but, hey, <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> hey, it helps. It helps. Every promotion is something, you know. But no, it it helps because um for me, Miss Marvel came out in Moon Knight. All those came out when I was injured. So I was trying to find shows to watch. So that really helped me. And now I'm like everything's coming out with more seasons to it. Like this summer I turned pretty. I love that show. Last year it came out. And they're coming out in the new season. And then Outer Banks just came out with the new season. And I'm like, I don't have time to watch it. Stop releasing seasons, guys. Like, yeah. I, the only time I could really think to watch it would be, like, at the airport or on planes or something. And I just forget. And I'll just, like, be <laughs> scrolling on my phone or doing my homework or something. And I'll be like, shoot, like, I could be watching a show right now. Nah, you got to do homework. Schoolwork, schoolwork <laughs> for our homework. Yeah, schoolwork got to come first. So, so close to graduation. So close. How did so. you, like, one, okay, so there's two questions I really want to ask, and, and I, I kind of want you to go on. One, how did you get into pro wrestling? And then two, like, how did you develop your character? Um, So I got into wrestling. I just loved it as a kid. Like, I was so obsessed. Like, these walls behind me used to be just covered in posters and, like, I would hang up my action figures and I would go to shows and I was just obsessed 
like for real like every single day I would listen to the theme songs I would like just obsessed right and then um I just started watching it one day because my brother was watching it and I thought it was really cool so we kind of just started being fans of it and then he eventually grew out of it and I just grew more in love with it and then um yeah I just I just loved it. And I really gravitated towards John Cena and the Bella twins. And um, a lot of the women, when they did the women's revolution, I was like, this is so cool. Like I want to be a wrestler. And then for like my character, I am for sure still developing it because I feel like I'm also developing as a person, like being only 18 and just finally starting to get out on my own and separate myself from my parents has been like, crazy like I still live at home but I definitely do a lot of my own stuff now and like doing all of that and like experiencing all that has kind of shaped my character because I would definitely say that Brittany Brooks is a very amplified version of like who I am just like regularly and um because at first I literally just threw on a pink shirt and went out there and like didn't was scared of everything and now I'm starting to develop a little bit more confidence and like find stuff that works and find stuff that I like um, like I've been recently referring to myself as the mega star because I got like this jacket and these glasses and I started coming out with it and like people always thought that like every time I walk out people like think it's cool and I'm like okay cool like a mega star and then um, I changed my music because it used to be Focus on Me by Ariana Grande because I love Ariana Grande but then everybody would always be like how come you don't use Britney Spears because like your name is Britney so I was like, okay. And I was like, you know, the perfect song is Give Me More because it literally starts with, it's Britney. And yep. then um, <laughs> sometimes they play that at shows. And when they do play that intro part, people like make noise. Like they're like, oh, shoot. Like they think it's so cool. And but sometimes they have to cut it out if it's like a if it's more a PG show. So I just come out and I'm like, it's Britney. <laughs> And I won't say the other word. And but then for like um my my um signature move, it's like a reverse DDT. I'll go, it's Britney, and then hit it. But no, like I'm definitely still developing my character. And like Gabe always says in his um Twitter spaces, like I need to work on that thirty seconds. Tell me who you are. Like I really don't even know what I would say, and that's like been mm. stretched me out and I've been writing down ideas and stuff but like I don't really know how to explain myself and I think it's because I'm still really developing like who I am as a person like I I don't even know because wrestling has always been like my personality trait and now that I am a wrestler it's like okay everybody's a wrestler so like what am I personally like doing and like most and my life is turning even more into wrestling so I'm like man I don't know what I am <laughs> 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 no I definitely I understand because like even for me like when I first started getting in right like I was still thinking about like my character side of things and like how I wanted to build it and I was always under the assumption that your trainer gave you your character I just didn't know right and mind you like I like just to kind of date me right I'm 37 about to turn 38 so I'm 34 years old thinking that some body is going to make my character and then I have to make it work and then maybe from there like I can kind of figure out what I want to do and so I ran with it. So my, my trainer was like, hey, we're going to make you the military guy. You're very stoic. Remember, be very, like, be very mil militaristic about what you're going to do and, like, you know, be tactical and all this stuff. And, like, I tried it for, like, I don't know, 10 months. And, like, it kind of was, like, started getting over. But, like, I, it just wasn't me. It was like you're, like, forcing something to hit, right? And finally, I just told him, I was like, listen, I can't. I, I love the fact that you want me to do it like this, but. I just can't. I was like, I'm faking it way too much. And like, it's, it's just not me. And my friends all noticed it too. Even my friends that were in the military and my friends that were like with me in high school, were all noticing that this wasn't, this wasn't me. So they were like, no, no, no. We like the other person that like always just is like jokey, dark kind of humor, that kind of guy. So like that guy right up there. And so I decide, yeah, if you can't tell there's Deadpool <laughs> just chilling. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I don't so know. then so then I changed the whole thing of where I was like cutting promos like in more of a comedic style because the one thing about military people is that we kind of tend to have like a lot of dark humor about us and so I was like let's just run with it let's just see what happens let's have some fun and I started cutting promos that way and my trainer was like yeah this is way more natural than what it was before so like 
I kind of started understanding. So I started adding more stuff that happened to me in my life and just building that character up. So when you're talking about like shaping your character because you're still learning as a person yourself, it's interesting because I definitely going to have to keep tabs because I definitely want to see like how your character morphs and changes because I know another person who's been on this show, who's actually been on the show a couple of times. Um, she started off uh, very basic, right? And that's, in fact, it was in her name and people who know basic Becca was that person. And now, you know, she's the international pop star and she is like a whole nother level, but I watched her develop from like the very beginning to like grow to this like mega star. And so to hear you like talk about, it, I'm like, I kind of want to see where this goes. Cause it's definitely gonna be a lot of fun, but I definitely, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely a learning process that you have to keep taking with you and keep like working and shifting and like building onto. And then like the more it starts to grow, the more you start to grow like this world, the more you start to realize like where you are and what you're going to do. And I'm like, wow, this is, it's is so it much insane how much you have to put into it. Yeah. It's wild. Is she Becca forever? Yeah. Like, is that her? Okay. Cause I was like, I think yeah. I know what he's talking about, but I was like, yeah. D3. Okay. So if I, just looked up, I was like, I know Becca. Like I know of a Becca. I've never met her. So like I followed her on Instagram a while ago and I was like, she seems so cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, depending on what side of her you meet, you might, you might be in for a shock. <laughs> I only say that because, you know, she is Becca, but it is cool. No, she is definitely, she's a, a complete sweetheart. And, uh, it's one of those things where it's like you you meet somebody and then they teach you a lot of things that unknowingly they teach you a lot of things. And you're just like, wow, like you just kind of watch them grow and you're like kind of growing too. At the same time. Like like I said, like I just happen to be, be able to try to figure out who I am, like as far as in the wrestling sense. And I'm like, oh, I'm just adding pieces to me and having more fun with this. And like you shape this whole entire world and then people start to like play in the world and then you're just like now you're just having way too much fun with it yeah so what's one of the worst bumps you've taken oh um honestly I feel like with the adrenaline and matches I never really take horrible bumps like it's always in practice when I like take the worst like stalling suplexes always kill me when we do them in practice but like or I did a superplex well I didn't do a su- I got superplexed at a show a couple weeks ago and honestly it was like the nicest superplex i've ever taken in my life i was shocked um and then um like though i guess kind of the worst one was we were i was at the level up expo in uh, vegas for versus and they were doing a battle royal and the battle royal was wild because you can bring any weapon in and people were bringing like all kinds of stuff there was like shopping carts but it was also a battle royal so like there was people, there was a lot of people, and there was a lot of weapons everywhere. I got power, bu- or no, 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 I got, was it, I think he literally, what did he do? I can't remember. No, I think it was a power bomb, but it could have been a literally a backdrop where I was like sitting on his shoulders. And he was like, very tall. He was like almost six <laughs> And there was so many people standing in the ring. I like took that and like it didn't matter who eliminated who and I was like at that point I was like I'm not kicking out of this so you better pin me <laughs> because I was like there's so many people in the rings so there was no give and then um from that high up it was just <laughs> it was rough but no it was fun but I was like there's no way I'm kicking out of this like please <laughs> it's one of those that like just sucks the air like right out of your lungs and you're yep. like all right we're done. We're done. That was the last day of the weekend, so I was chilling. I was like, let's go home now. <laughs> <laughs> Just take it out. Just wrap it up, man. We got to go. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. Like, uh, so what's one of the hardest lessons you've had to learn being in a business? I think it's just how to not necessarily suck up to people, but like, I guess – people people will find a reason to like not like you people will find a reason to talk crap about you people will you know just like and that it's for wrestlers and fans too but like just 
obviously like I'm I love being nice to people and I'm honestly like nice but there I've come a lot across people where they're just like rude and petty and don't like aren't sharing that energy and I'm like that's cool like you do you but like I don't really have a problem with you but then they have a problem with me and that was like one of the hardest things because like I don't like to disappoint people ever like I don't care if it's a little little thing or like a huge thing like I just don't like disappointing people and it like so it hurts me if somebody's hurt with me but then it kind of came to a point where I was like who cares like let me do me. If you don't like me, then that's kind of your problem because I've given you no reason to not like me and you still don't. But, you know, it's OK. And that's kind of like, I guess, one of the things that I learned, like you're not going to always please everybody. And like I don't go to a normal high school, so we don't have like drama and like, you know, the high school stereotypes because we don't have sports. We don't have like we don't have like anything at my high school that like a normal high school would have because they pay for us to go to community college at the same time. So I've never really came across like people not liking me for no reason because I've always been like, I always try to surround myself with people who like share my energy. So I have learned that wrestling is a lot like high school, like how, how high school should be, but I just never experienced cause I don't go to a normal high school. No, I definitely understand that. And it is something that I had to even like check my, check myself in with, because it's like you find yourself like sometimes like just being around people who are just like putting out negative energy and then you're trying to like navigate your way back to like where you're comfortable. And it's like sometimes you know you just gonna have to pull yourself away from everybody, but you got to and, and you you brought up a great point that you know you're not gonna like you're not gonna please everybody, right? And so you have to kind of control the controllables, right? Like how can you if, you know, someone doesn't like you, like, what you going to do? Like, well, I can just continue just being me and, you know, being professional and being polite and, like, still talk to people. And at the end of the day, you know, that person who doesn't like me, it really doesn't matter because I can't change their mind and I'm not going to try to change their mind. So, you know, just kind of, like, sway it off and just keep moving. Yeah, and I'm, like, at the end of the day, it's a business. So if we have to put together a match, like, I respect you and I just – I want at least your respect to like, you know, not talk down to me and like that type of stuff. Cause I have dealt with that too a lot. And it's like, okay, like, but we're going to make it work and we're going to have a fire match because my coach always tells me it's honestly better when two people don't like each other when they're wrestling, because they'll subconsciously like they'll make the show better because they care, but they also don't give a fuck about each other. Oh, <laughs> they don't do that. That's but, fine. Hey, this is a show. Hey, words are allowed on this show. <laughs> like, <laughs> let it be known. It's Britney bitch earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I was just letting you go. It was just funny because you were just like, it's Britney. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yep, yep, yep. This is, this is okay. funny. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so listen, like we, you've been back now. You've been around in different locker rooms in different states, especially. And I kind of need one do and one don't of the locker room. Um, I would say one do is to just like, really just like talk to everybody. Like I love talking to people and I love like going up and shaking everybody's hands because it's like, it, it's ze it costs $0 to be nice. And I always say that like, you never know like who could, you know, be a sweet person that you end up being best friends with, or, you know, could be someone that you could work with or work for in the future. Like, it doesn't matter who it is. Like, always treat everybody with respect and don't let the way that they're, like, they look or the way that they, like, initially, like, how you think that they act before, like, actually meeting them and talking to them. That's, like, probably a do. And I don't, what I've learned, as I'm kind of bad at this, but I always think about it, is, like, leaving my, like, stuff open and everywhere. Like, that was something that a promoter told me a while ago about how, like, I mean, I didn't really learn a lot about locker room etiquette. And um, the promoter picked me up from the airport and we were driving like a really long, like, I think it was like an hour away. And he was, we were just kind of talking about like etiquette and stuff. And he's like, yeah, like as a promoter, like I always see like some people, they'll just like leave their luggage open and have stuff flung everywhere and take up so much space. And he was like, that like looks bad to me. And I was like, oh, thank you so much for telling that. Cause I never knew that. And I feel like a lot of people don't really know that, but like 
I'm really bad about that too. Cause like sometimes I'll have like a merch suitcase and my regular suitcase and then my backpack. So like I try to keep it as much in the corner as possible and like closed and make sure that everything is like at least put away and out of the way so then people don't trip over it. Like it's not taking up too much space and more people have space for their stuff too. Yeah. I think that's the one thing that a lot of people forget is that like some of these locker rooms that you get put into, they're not exactly like the biggest locker rooms. You're not like in like, I don't know, like a stadium where like, you know, professional football player plays or even like big colleges go, right? Yeah. Like sometimes, sometimes it's just literally a hallway and that's it. Like, mm-hmm. so you got to kind of have to like, remember like, hey, yo, keep everything kind of nice, tight and tidy because like if, you know, everything goes everywhere, if everybody's doing that, then there's like nowhere to walk and then you might step mm-hmm. on somebody's stuff and then God knows yeah. like what else happens after that. So yeah, no, that's a very good point to bring up is like, yo, like if you have a lot of stuff, yo, Keep it tight, yo. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, uh, yo, so we're going to get into my favorite segment of the Three Count Podcast, and that is the Three Count Podcast 10 Count Questions. And here's how it works, Mrs. Brooks. Uh, we're going to fire off 10 questions at you rapid right fast, and whatever your answer is, that's your answer. Okay. All right, so we're going to put on an imaginary timer for added pressure. Bing! Oh, God. <laughs> and in the words of Mike Goldberg, here we go. Smackdown or Raw? Oh, uh, Raw. Favorite movie? Avengers Endgame. Let's go. Marvel or DC? Marvel. <laughs> Favorite cartoon? Uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. Let's go. It's a great show. Uh, PlayStation or Xbox? I suck at video games, so we'll go with PlayStation. It's a great pick. Uh, favorite actor? Tom Holland. I love Tom Holland. <laughs> You'll love Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, he told me that. He was like, people think, like, I'm, like, a Tom Holland knockoff. And I was like, oh, my God. We're going to put a timer on this, right? So if you get a chance to go check out IWTV, that's right, IWTV. It's, like, you know, $9.99 a month, right? Anyway, go check out uh, Let Them Fight, Invictus Pro Wrestling's Let Them Fight, right? Not only because your boy was on there, but also because, uh tko and jack tomlinson had a fight and tko at the time had a spider-man suit get up and he would come out with a spider-man mask and they actually did the spider-man meme like yo uh it was great are you talking about tko Seiko? yeah oh my god i used to watch his youtube channel when i was a kid and then i I'm know. Wrestling and i was like no way like i yep. watched every single youtube video he did as a kid I loved him, and now he's wrestling, and I'm like, dude, that's so wild. <laughs> but, uh, all right, back on the timer. Uh, Apple or Android? Apple. Favorite podcast? Oh, I feel like I had to say the three count, because I'm on it right now, and it's fire. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. It's not like we have this marketed, like, everywhere either, too, just to kind of subconsciously sell this out. Uh, nominate one person that you want to see on this podcast. Ooh, Brooke Havoc. Let's do that. Yes, hundred yeah. percent. And then, last but not least, my favorite question: Ask every single person who comes on this show. Favorite curse word? Oh shoot! There's so many options. I like to say <laughs> "fuck" a lot. <laughs> That's like the best word to use. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone drops an elbow like on your back. Fuck. <laughs> you know, you just like let it roar, and like you're like <laughs> trying not to yell it out loud, like you're. Like, you know you're at a PG show, but you still have to say it. You're like, fuck. <laughs> Yo, so those are all my uh, all my questions I have to ask. So the last thing I need from you is to let our viewers and our listeners know where they can find you. You can find me as the Brittany Brooks on Instagram. There is That's where I'm the most active. Brittany Brooks on Twitter. Um, Facebook is also Brittany Brooks. I have a YouTube channel, but I haven't updated it since February. But it's the Britney Brooks 04. And then um, I have a store frontier where you can buy my merch um, and get it shipped to your house. Um, and that link is on my link tree and my all my social medias. Well, there you go. She told you where you can find her. She told you about her merch store. She even told you about her YouTube channel. So you know what that means. Like every great part of a wrestling match. We got to take this home because this is the three count podcast with this now in Turing. And now I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, the man that 
that leads you out that mountain called wrestling. And by now, like I said, being your Sherpa, it's never about me. It's about who's in terrain. So who's in terrain? You see her right there, Brittany Brooks herself. And you guys are going to do tune in to the next episode and be there. Or you're legitimately following us on all of our social media platforms. Just subscribe to our YouTube channel. You're following us on Spotify. You're even leaving those five-star fraud slash reviews that you can on Apple Podcasts from top of the Tokyo Dome. You're even checking us out on app, uh, Amazon Music because we're there. You're buying our merch on ProWrestlingTees.com or ForYourWear.com. You're even telling your friends, your family, and your enemies about us. More importantly, you're leaving all those comments. Tell us all the beautiful things we want to hear or don't want to hear. We, we accept those too. Or you're really just kind of waiting for this episode to end. You're waiting for that outro. And then you're choosing another episode to listen to. Kawaii. What's going on, Three Count Nation? I'm Clifford Red Dog Miller with the catchphrase. But what I really want to do right now, go to twitter.com, right? Go over there, find us at the Three Count underscore pod, give us a follow, give us a like, give us a comment. We want to talk to you guys. Go to IG at the Three Count Pod, give us a like, give us a follow, leave us a comment. We want to interact with you. Go to youtube.com, give us a subscribe, turn the bell on, turn on notifications, leave a comment. We want to talk to you. Go to anger.fm forward slash the three count podcast. And in there, you can leave us a message and we will talk to you. Basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that we want to talk to you. We want to have fun with you guys. And we love listening to what you guys have to say. Also, one thing I need you to do for me, the three count podcast also has merchandise. Oh, at pro forward slash the three count pod. Please go buy our t-shirts. We love you guys and we hope you love us too. So. Show us some support, please.